my name is Michael Dunn. I'm the creator of theoryofknowledge.net, which is the world's most used um, online resource for theory of knowledge. Uh, I've been an international teacher since 2001. Uh, I teach history and film uh, and, of course, theory of knowledge. Um, and when asked, I do geography and politics as well. Knowledge questions are the fundamental element of TOC. They're the thing that underpin everything that you do. Um, but they are also, unfortunately, something that students really tie themselves up in knots over. Um, mainly, I think, because they think they are something which they are not. Uh, knowledge questions are simply that. They are questions about knowledge. Um, TOC is built on one big question, which is how do we know what we know? Uh, and you can see knowledge questions really as scaled down versions of that big question applied to real life situations. Uh, they're simplest, they could be something like um, how do we know that there's a war going on in Iraq at the moment? How do we know that there is a general election in the UK today? How do we know that Juventus beat uh, Barcelona on Tuesday night? So knowledge questions um, underpin the assessment as well as your understanding of theory of knowledge in general. Um, the way TOC is assessed has changed. There are now just two assessment criteria in the essay. Uh, the first one is understanding knowledge questions. The second one is analysis of knowledge questions. The first means how relevant are they to your prescribed title in the essay? Um, to what extent have you looked at them um, through the lens of the areas of knowledge and the ways of knowing? And have you considered other perspectives? Your analysis of uh, knowledge questions um, is the way in which you have supported your arguments with evidence, with real life situations. Um, have you considered counterclaims? Uh, and have you looked at the implications of uh, your knowledge questions? So f for the presentation, um, the criteria um, has become the criteria have become the criterion. There is only one um, criterion uh, for the marking of the presentation. Um, and this is all about coming up with what they say is a well-formulated knowledge question, which you have effectively explored. So you need to do those two things, and you will be given your mark based on that. So as we can see, the knowledge questions really are fundamental to your eventual mark in talk. OK. so. A knowledge question should have certain characteristics. First of all, it should be about something which matters. It should have um, significant implications. It should be something that engages all of us. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a worldwide phenomenon. It doesn't have to be an enormous um, event that's going on in the world. It can be something local. It could even be something personal, but it's got to be something that we all care about, something that we can recognize, something that we can sympathize with. Um, so it should engage your readers or your audience when you're writing your essay or your presentation. Um, secondly, it has to be an open question. Um, it has to lead on to something which is defined by debate. It can't just be a yes, no answer. Um, a good rule of thumb is that if it causes a fight in your top classroom, it's probably a good knowledge question. Um, thirdly, and this is a tricky bit, it has to be a second order knowledge question. We're not interested in first order knowledge questions. Now, what's the difference between these? A first order knowledge question is about the phenomenon itself. It's about something going on in the world. A second order knowledge question is about how we know about that phenomenon, how we know about that event. To put this into context, if we were looking at human sciences, we're not interested in theories about the mind. We are interested in how we know about those theories of the mind. So can we trust what these psychologists are telling us? Um, has the scientific method been used? Um, is it reliable information? Is it strong knowledge? Um, if we are looking at ethics, we're not really interested in the answer of, is the death penalty right or wrong? We want to know about how you come up with a position, how you, how you base your um, knowledge on this question. So we might think about the way in which we use faith to come up with an answer to this question. We might look at how we come up um, with an answer based on reason. Do we use religion? Do we use the law, et cetera, et cetera. If we're looking at the natural sciences, we're not interested in Einstein's theory of relativity per se. We're interested in how Einstein came up with the theory of relativity. Did he use imagination? Did he use reason? Did he use intuition, et cetera, et cetera. 
Okay, so how do we how do we get our knowledge questions? How do we extract them from a real life situation? The first thing to say is that virtually everything, every event, every problem, every issue has a knowledge question attached to it. Um, in its most basic form, we could simply ask, how do we know? How do we know about this? How do we know that there's an election going on in the UK today? How do we know that the sky is blue? How do we know that Washington DC exists, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, but we need to be a little more sophisticated than that. We need to link our knowledge question to an area of knowledge or a way of knowing or more than one of those. Um, and we need to frame it in a way in which we can explore it through those areas of knowledge. So to give an example, I read a story the other day from the BBC about um, pop music. The headline was pop music had three revolutions. Apparently, scientists in London universities have um, looked at around 17,000 songs from the US Billboard Hot 100, and they have said that there were three revolutions in music, in 1964, in 1983, and in 1991. Now, as a music lover, I was drawn to this article. Um, it seemed to me extraordinary that scientists could pinpoint with exact um, precision and accuracy, this was when the uh, revolutions occurred. Um, and I got thinking about this story, um, and I thought this would be a very good story to look at in a top classroom, or even in an essay or a, or a presentation. Um, but what knowledge question can we use for this? Um, well, first of all, which areas of knowledge are we looking at? Clearly we're looking at music, so we're looking at the arts. We are also looking at science. The article doesn't specify what sort of scientists these people were. Um, so it could be natural sciences, it could be human sciences. So what's our knowledge question? Well, you could come up with something along the lines of um, to what extent can we use the scientific method in order to understand the arts? And that would work. OK, so Including a knowledge question in your essay is obviously fundamental to your eventual mark and talk. It can be a tricky thing to do, but it doesn't have to be a tricky thing to do. Um, first of all, your knowledge question has to be relevant to your prescribed title. So whatever you have chosen to write about, uh, you must make sure that your knowledge questions are related to that. An easy way to do that is actually to use the wording of the prescribed title to formulate your knowledge question. However, we don't need to frame our knowledge questions as a question. In fact, it's better not to do that. What you need to do is break your knowledge question in two. Present a knowledge claim, which proposes the idea that you're talking about, and then um, come up with a, with a counterclaim, which looks at the other point of view. Uh, so if we are, we can put that in co into context, if we are looking at the real life situation that we were just um, talking about, um, our knowledge claim would be along the lines of the scientific method helps us to understand the arts. Okay, it's, it's no longer a question, it becomes a claim. You would put that in your topic sentence in the first part of your paragraph to make it really clear for the, for the examiner or the reader. You would then present some general discussion looking at the nature of the arts, looking at the nature of the, of, uh, the sciences, perhaps thinking in terms of the arts being very technical, um, looking at music, uh, looking at the structure of a novel, looking at the way in which a, a piece of visual art is constructed. Uh, you don't yet jump in with your example. Give general discussion first of all. Uh, talk about the areas of knowledge. After you've done that, you then move on to your example. You look at your real life situation and that acts as justification for what you've just been saying. So you have three different elements. Your claim in your topic sentence, your explanation, and then your example, your real life example, or your real life situation to support what you've just said. You would then do the same for your counterclaim. Again, phrase it as a statement rather than a question. So in this case, possibly the scientific method has limitations in helping us to understand the arts, or we need subjective methods in order to understand the arts. Uh, you would then explain that, perhaps thinking about m more in terms of the emotional side of the arts, more in terms of the way in which we use imagination, uh, subjective methodology rather than strict scientific clinical ideas. 
Um, finally, you'd come up with your real life situation again. Perhaps in this case, you might talk in terms of your own experiences with the arts, reading a book, looking at a piece of uh, visual art, um, listening to music, and describe the way in which you use emotion to understand the arts. And you then have your two elements of your knowledge question, your claim and your counterclaim. OK, so the way you use um, knowledge questions in the presentation is quite different from the essay. Um, first of all, the big thing is you choose your uh, main knowledge question. You choose your main real life situation. Um, and unlike the essay, it's um, more advisable to start with your real life situation and move to your knowledge question. With the essay, as we've just seen, we start with our knowledge question, we discuss it, and then we move to our real life situation. You have to turn that on its head for the presentation, at least for your main real life situation. Um, you should then provide some secondary knowledge questions um, that are related to your main uh, knowledge question. And each one of those, and there should be three or four of those, each one of those should be supported with another real life situation, either taken from outside reading or from your own experiences. So in the case of um, our example that we've just looked at, first of all, you would describe that real life situation, that um, case of the scientists looking at pop music. Uh, you would then explain your knowledge question. So how did you come up with your knowledge question? How does it relate to your real life situation? Make sure those two things are very related, um, very closely linked. Uh, and then you would move on to your secondary knowledge questions um, and go through them discussing them and presenting your real life situations. It's also worth saying that the presentation is less formal than the essay. You don't have to rigidly divide it into claims and counterclaims. You can take a more discursive approach. If there, are, there, there will be more than one of you in your team, so you might all have a different opinion. That's a great thing to bring to a presentation. You don't have to all agree. It doesn't have to all be very, very rigidly scripted. Um, so you can be a little more formal and you can enjoy yourself a little more.